project to uh, six acres of this property? Oh. Welcome uh, to the Curry County Board of Commissioners Administrative Workshop. Uh, I'm going to call to order and amendment approval of the agenda, gentlemen. So moved as amended. Whoop. Okay. Did we amend it? Well, it, well, it was amended from the original. Yep. Did you get not get a? Yeah, you do. You, yeah. That's an amended one. Uh, but I'm also going to add another one here. So before we make a motion, if I may, Mr. Chair. Oop. Um, we just want, I just needed to know in convenience of time for everybody if we could f switch 3A, 3B. That's why uh, um, Building Inspector Thompson is here and Roadmaster Christensen is here for the um, four day. Uh, oh, just the time, just the. We're uh, just going to switch those. Yeah. yeah. Some and annex departments possibly go into a four day work week, four 10 hour days, seven to six with a one hour lunch. So. Um, They've offered to contribute a little bit in the in the concept here. I think Assessor Cohen might be here later. So, uh, yeah, I'm asking if we could switch 3A and 3B. We would do the new jail courthouse uh, cost estimate uh, at 2.30. That's fine. I'm good with that. Chris, are you good with yeah, that? Yeah, I'm fine with it. Yeah. So, look, we got a motion to approve the... Uh, I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the amended agenda. Okay. Second, Mr. Chair. Got moving, a motion and a second. All in favor say yes. 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 Motion carries three to zero. We are up for, now what, what we're going to do C instead of A, right? So that's Garrett, first off. No, B, I think. No, B. B. We did, we switched A and B. Okay, I got gotcha. you. I don't got gotcha. So I'll start off real quick here, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, so, the, you know, the, just some real generalized questions that were in the uh, agenda packet and the agenda item is, is there a way that we could better serve the public? Uh, can we uh, save diminishing funds? Is there any way we can improve productivity? Uh, would it be better for some of our employees? Hopefully all of them if we ever, in fact, decided to pursue that path. Um, individual departments scheduling, uh, which departments, if any, would apply? So, you know, the general headings on this that I also included with the agenda is how employers benefit, benefit from a four-day work week. That's employers. A four-day work week in action. Why four days doesn't mean less work. Then they offer four key benefits of a four-day work week. And I'll skip those for now. Uh, well, no, I won't. Uh, talent attraction. Lower employee turnover. Lower cost, and I skipped one. Increased productivity, a um, little bit of information each one of those. And the final uh, subheading is, are shorter work weeks the future of work? You see that a lot around the country. You actually see a lot of big companies, of course, putting their people at home. Um, and uh, they're finding that, that in some cases there is more productivity. There are happier employer employees, um, so on and so forth. So. I just want to open up to the board. Um, you know, workshop is just that uh, work session. Just take a look at this, and and I think it would be mostly in the annex. Uh, but you know, I don't want to exclude any departments, uh, other than obviously the sheriff's department. Um, but scheduling is a big part of this. Over the years that I was in business, rotating people and time off and all that, boy, that was that was a big job. So um, I'm not saying it would be everybody got Monday off or everybody got Friday off, but that would be up to the department managers and, and elected officials to structure it how they feel would be best for you know the best service to the to the public. So that's my that's my opening uh, comments. Okay. Questions? No, I'm going to reserve any questions I have for now. I had never really thought about it. I saw this and I looked at it and I I don't know if I have really any thing. I know we, we did it at uh, Coos Curry Electric and it, it's worked fantastically because Coos Curry, un, un, unlike just Curry County, has got huge ends of Coos and Curry County. So they, the guys can go out and have a, a 10 hour day and and spend time working instead of traveling and but we they did the 10 hours a day with a half hour lunch 
and so you start at 7 you're done at 5 30. that 5 30 gets people that are get off at 5 able to go into the office which that would work here too especially if we had an hour lunch you wouldn't get leave here till like you're thinking seven to seven to six with an hour lunch yeah or are you i would assume the departments would give their employees the option of a 30 minute lunch this is yeah Julie, you got anything to add on that? And anybody from the uh, audience? I do, as a matter of fact. Hey. Julie so Peril in HR. Um, several, well, a few of the departments in the annex already work for TENS, community development, uh, the assessor's office, but they've, they've done their schedules so that the office is open every day of the week. And I think that's important. If we're here to serve the public, I think it's important that the offices are open to the public every day. Um, the four-day work week really wouldn't make sense in our office. Uh, we are an intergovernmental department, so we serve all the other departments. So if the other departments are here, we kind of need to be here. Also, with the way payroll rolls, you know, I can't necessarily work a four-day week if I've got a payday coming up on Friday and I'm not here. You know, there's, it wouldn't work for our office, I can say that. Um, but I think it is important, and I think community development and the assessor's office have their offices schedules now, scheduled now, so there is at least one person in the office every day of the week. So whether they're working Monday through Thursday or Tuesday through Friday, the offices are open to the public. And I think that's the important piece. And Rhodes has been doing it for a long time. Rhodes, it makes sense. You've got, you've got crews out all over the county, and it makes sense to have their longer day because it gives them more productive time out in the field, less time travel, you know, you've got one less day of, of vehicles going from one end of the county to the other, so that makes sense, and it gives them a longer productive day. Um, they used to alternate back and forth between four tens and five eights. Mm -hmm. You know, they do five eights in the off season if you mm -hmm. have an off season, and four tens during the summer when the work is high. It got to a point several years ago that said, "Doesn't make sense to flip flop back and forth. Let's just stay four tens." So, the headlight on. So for them, for them, that makes sense. So HR Swift, yeah. yeah. If you if payroll paydays on Friday, if that wasn't for you personally, uh, if you didn't have that obligation, would you prefer to work a four day and have those three days off? And yeah, you know, I haven't really thought about it. It doesn't. It's really a non-issue. You might to be me. old school though. <laughs> and I mean that as a compliment. So, um, but as far as you know, payrolls are semi-monthly, so it's not every other Friday. If it were, if it were that. It, could be a different story, but the way the payrolls are semi-monthly and the way they fall and they're different days of the week at different times, so it just doesn't make sense. Also for um, for AP, you know, you're cutting out one day of, of ability to get those checks ready every week because they do run checks every week. So well, one day, but you still got the hours covered. That's true. That's true. So you would have to ask them. Do you know how many? While you're here, I, I want to keep going here, but. Um, how many how many departments are on the 37 and a half hours? I mean, none now. None now. Everyone yeah. is 40 hours. I, good. I remember a couple of years ago that was somewhat of an issue. So yeah. that very helpful. Um, yeah, that's all I have for now. Okay. Okay. Anybody else like to speak to this, Jim? Afternoon, Commissioners. Jim Cullen, Curry County Assessor. Thanks, Julie. And and she did uh, give you a pretty good idea what it is that we do in the assessor's office. Uh, we do rotate, so we have somebody that works Fridays. I prefer to work a five-day week myself, so I'm usually there on Fridays myself. Um, but uh, prior to a year or two ago, we were on four tens and, and the office was open to the public Monday through Thursday. Public got used to it. It didn't it wasn't really an issue for the public. Um, you know, I think it was more an issue for the commissioners at that time and, and uh you asked that we change it up and be open the five days a week and, and we are and and but my employees are still working the four tens. The employees like working the four tens. I think it makes them more productive, um, partially because we have, you know, what I would call protected hours. We have uh, most of my employees get there at six thirty in the morning, so they're working 
you know, I can uh, verify that, by the way. <laughs> until like 8.30 before we even open up to the public. And so that's protected time. They're pretty productive during that time. Um, and it does allow for my appraisers when they go out in the field, spend more time out in the field. If we're having to drive to Langlois, you know, obviously that's 45 minutes to an hour one way. And if they can spend a couple more hours while they're up there in a day, I think one of the things they found at Goose Curry, like you said, John, was that it does save gas. Um, I, I think to a much lesser extent, they found that they were even sa saving on electricity. Um, I don't know that we'd look at this to be so much as a cost savings. In, in those respects, gas and, and electricity or, or whatever other incidental costs we have, but uh, I, I think it's more so, I think it's a good idea because today's employees like it and uh, I think they're more productive. That's what I have. Okay. So you, you do have your office open on Fridays now? It is open on Fridays, but if you decide to go back to uh, a four day work week, I'd probably close it back up on Fridays. Like I said, the, the public didn't have a problem with it. Yeah, they get they get used to it. Well, they got used to it with Coos Curry Electric. <laughs> well, mostly, I mean, we had, especially during tax season, we always had people coming in on Friday looking for the tax office, and so it, people did miss you, Jim. Well. <laughs> Rich, go ahead. Yeah, just, I think uh, Commissioner Herzog and HR Julie hit on it really well as far as the road department. We save a lot of money not have paying gas that one day a week. Plus, uh, you know, we mobilize to the far ends of the county. And when you send, you know, 10 people out to the far ends of the county and you only have, it takes an hour and a half to get there, an hour and a half back, you can only work, you know, five hours. Whereas if you have a 10 hour day now, you're working seven hours and now we can co maybe complete that job in a day or two instead of two, three days. So it cuts the mobilization down big time for us. But, you know, we're a 24 seven operation as well. You know, these last two weeks we've had plenty of storms and my crews were out there all in the middle of the night, picking up down trees, helping Coos Curry electric uh, trees on power lines on our roads and, uh, with the, and sanding and snow plowing roads. And so, uh, it works really well. It saves us a lot of money, and uh, but we're on call through dispatch 24/7. Mm -hmm. Well, that that wouldn't change. Dave. Uh, David Barnes. Um, I'm not opposed to the idea, but it I don't think that it should be a countywide proposal. I think it should be left like somebody said, leave it up to the department heads, leave it up to the electeds. You know, my department in Treasury, we can't do a four day week. There's banking that happens every day. So somebody needs to come in and do it every day. Whether you get more, I, I, I used to work in the field. I, I used to work at an electric company. I understand what, what Rich is saying and what Jim is saying about getting your people out and having them do more work once they're out in the field. And yes, I definitely agree that for people like that, you see more productivity. But people who are, I've, I've found in, in just my observation that people who sit at desks for eight hours a day, people who seem to be programmed for that. And that extra 10, that extra two hours a day, I'm, you know, I, I would debate Jim on that of, of whether how much more productivity there really is. But when you're thinking about going to a 10 hour day, I want you to all look to your, to your right. And Mr. Jesuit sitting over there lives up in Port Orford. If you were seven to six, he would have to leave his house by 530, which means he's up 430 in the morning to be here by seven o'clock and won't get home until 730 at night every night. And that's the hardship 
for, for a lot of people. You know, there's, there are people who live at the far edges of this county that do commute down here to go to work. You have people in facilities and other places. And that puts a hardship on them. You know, all of a sudden, a 10-hour workday with an hour commute on each side is a 12-hour day. And that's an awful long day for somebody. You know, so I just want you to keep that in mind. But, you know, like, like has been said, if you wanted to leave it at the departmental levels, you know, sheriff can't work a four-day week, juvenile can't work a four-day week, I can't work a four-day week. You know, people have to be here. So, you know, I'd, I'd rather see you leave it up to, pe up to others than rather mandating it as a countywide matter. Yeah, before you leave, I think you did your math incorrectly, though. Because mm -hmm. you said J.J. won't get home till 7.30? If he's not leaving here till six o'clock, if his work day is from seven till six, it's only half an hour to Port Orford from here. Mr. Jesuit, how did you, you drive? I don't drive that fast. It's Gold Beach to Port Orford? Forty-five minutes. I'm sorry, it's forty-five minutes, so he'd be home at seven o'clock. It's thirty miles. It's a half an hour, Dave. Staff Jesuit, would you rather drive back and forth <laughs> to Gold Beach four days a week or five? Five. You would. Okay, yeah. Council okay. Pope. I'm just, yeah. so in a I'm UPS you truck, I can do here. it in half an hour. So I know you, everybody can do it. I, in half an anyway, I don't I drive do. that fast. I'm old now. I'm, <laughs> okay. You know, when I was 18, yeah, but I'm, I'm 60 now. I don't drive that fast okay. anymore. All right. Chris? I just want to say that I'm, I'm one of the old schoolers, I guess. Uh, but I, I, I think it should be left up to department heads. But I want department heads to know, as, as I want this board to know, you know we are sworn to serve. Mm -hmm. And we are a service-oriented industry, um, government, if you, not industry, but yeah. government. So um, making sure that when someone comes and knocks on a door in one of our services, uh, that that door will be answered is imperative to me. So if department heads want to be four days a week, if the assessor's office wants to go four tens, I'm fine. I just like that person when they come to the door on where wherever they're, whatever department they're coming to, when they knock on the door or call, someone answers the phone or answers the door because they've taken time out of their day to get here. And if it's one person a week, that's servicing, giving service to one person a week that pays our salary. Anybody else like to speak to this? Jarrett, Garrett. Mr. Thompson. Garrett Thompson, building official. Um, I work four tens. Love it. I would never want to go back. Um, that third day gives me sanity. Uh, <laughs> but I, I do understand the hardships for for some in, in the, the four tens. Um, we have individuals that are uh, who's working opposite schedules than their spouses, so they don't have to have daycare and, and the like. And um, I love the idea of putting it up as an option. I would, I would just hate to, to mandate it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, putting it, it, putting it at department heads level uh, of responsibility is, is appropriate. Um, we, our office is working four days a week right now. Uh, we do have people in office on Fridays. The, the office is not open to the public, but we get a lot of work done during that day. Um, plan review and, and other uh, inner office workings um, so so we're quite productive even though you know the door's not necessarily open to the public uh, and, and it, it seems to be working out really well for us uh, we don't get any complaints I mean it's posted on our website uh, you know on our, on our building department page that that we're not open on Friday so um, I haven't noticed any any complaints myself well, it kind of seems to me like it, it must have been department head optional all along, right? Because, I mean, I don't know who did it first, road department or planning or assessor's office. Uh, we, we I, I can't speak towards the other departments, but our department did it out of necessity. We were a, a person shy uh, of having a full roster, so um, we asked specifically if we could close the doors until we were fully staffed, and then we asked... Um, after after we found that staff member, if we could remain uh, closed until after the holiday season, because we only had just a, a, a about a month left, so um, we're at that point now where we potentially could open back up if if it was asked of us. But we have found that uh, our 
productivity on that day when we're not we can get work done uninterrupted is is a, a great boost to us so okay thanks if we're not if we're not going to talk about that anymore no nope. we are going to go to the courthouse or no we just need five minutes and she'll be calling in the okay or w architecture i just forwarded you that again yeah. So, maybe I can keep you up and go to your office. So, Garrett, can we continue just and talk about yours for? Sure. Thanks, everyone, for attending. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I'm uh, bringing back to you guys my uh, proposed up updates to the the uh, Curry County Building Code. Mm -hmm. and um, I'm been working on it for for a little bit now trying to, to just make sense of it I'm uh, hopefully you guys have all had a chance to read it and, and might have some good comments for me or, or suggestions um, so I, I did get a, a fun surprise um, building codes division for the state of Oregon sent me an email uh, needing a program renewal uh, for the building department it's one of those things where you you do it or lose it yeah. so it's just one of those where you it's kind of like the censuses I just you know I put it on the list and get it done um, one of the things that they required was a copy of our building department operating plan um, I must admit I was a little shocked when I went to look for it on our, our uh, drives and did not find one. Um, so I downloaded the ORS off the internet um, of exactly what was required in a, a building department's operating plan and I set to task creating um, uh, or compiling uh, the information. Uh, I found that most of that information was either on our website or um, the lion's share of it was actually inside of the code. So I did make a few red lines, which I'd like to give to you guys um, on my proposed code. Um, just just some, some one sentence additions, but there's uh, two or three of them. So I, I, I wanna get that to you. Okay. Um, that will take the place of actually having to duplicate a document and call it an, uh, an official operating plan, but this this would work as that document. Um, so it'll it'll take care of that for the state of Oregon as well. Good. But other than those, a uh, couple little additions, which I'll, which I'll get to you after this meeting, um, not, nothing else I, I've really found is, has changed significantly. So um, I think I had one error uh, when I wrote this and it was actually in the retention of plans and I think I'd called out uh, nine what was it, 180 days or something like that and it's actually two years that, it, that plans have to be retained after the completion of a job but, um, and I did make that correction on my copy but um, I was wondering if anybody else had any comments for me I have a couple yeah, sure um, great. on uh, section 202 the abatement of dangerous yes. buildings mm -hmm. Uh, here again, I don't know if, you know, uh, I, I can understand that it needs to happen, um, but who pays for it? Is that something, and I was, should we have language question. in there that says who's going to pay for this? And I was added to the section. Um, so, so there is language um, further on in this code that, oh, is, okay. that says where it's going to come from. Um, honestly, where it's going to come from is us in the short run. Um, it's about life safety. Right. Um, you know, my department, I can, I, I, I could handle the cleanup of one, possibly two, and that that would be it. So, the magnitude of, of dangerous buildings that we have um, is greater than that. So we'd have to be extremely careful on on what rises to the the necessity of having to um, take take a structure down and clean it up. Uh, because there's always the option of doing the work and then putting a lien on the property, but there's no guarantee of when we'd be able to collect on that lien. 
So that's... But if you put a me like a mechanics lien on a property because that would be a mechanics lien, you could you could force uh, a sale of the property after so many years and re recover your money. Uh, I believe if it's over, if it's a certain percentage of value of the property. Yeah. So that, and that's all. I'm I'm, I'm not yeah. disputing anything. What I'm asking is, should the board look at protecting its its resources? By having a provision set up in in the code or an ordinance that states that, you know, we can lien your property if we have to pay for the abatement of your property, we can lien the property, and mm -hmm. foreclose and and therefore forfeit the property and sell it down the road after so many years. Yeah, yeah. I, I like I said, there I did add language in this, but I think would definitely strengthen it if the board would would look okay, at so adding that's that. something to possibly. Uh, um, I know you don't have much to do, but just something for you to <laughs> add. I put it on the list. Yeah. <laughs> on your list but yeah I, but I think that's important you know, definitely that. in here and there were some other uh, recommendations towards towards that as well um, but yeah that that I actually spoke with uh, Brad record about that um, the the possibility of even uh, adding a line item to my to my budget just to, to have a place to pull from mm. um, take some of my my budget and putting it in an untouched line item just for the demolition and cleanup of of a structure if, if it rose to that i mean you know nobody wants to to eat that large of a of a bill but if it's life safety then it's Absolutely. gotta happen yeah yeah it's like this one right next door here i'm i'm, I'm surprised uh, nothing's been done with that the only the only reason why i have not acted on that structure in any way is because it seems to be imploding instead of exploding. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, the back roof did the other day. The, the walls aren't leaning out. Um, everything I, seems to be leaning in. So if it, if it fails, it's going to fail upon itself. And it is, it's, it is barred from entry. Um, everything is boarded up. Uh, so there's, there, there's not an immediate risk of loss of life. So, and, and that's what I look for. Um, I, I try to respect people's property rights as much as I possibly can. One other question I had was a vacation. Um, you know, are, are we looking to try and help? I, I mean, I know you sometimes we have to vacate a property, but mm -hmm. um, with the with the current state of the county, with housing and all sure. of that, um, are there any steps in place with other agencies to possibly help placement or anything like that? Because some a lot of a lot of that is people's own doing, and we have to pay for our you know for the choices we make in our life but there are I was at a property at lunchtime that oh my goodness and uh, sure if that person had would have to vacate their property mm -hmm. they have absolutely nowhere to go so it's it's kind of like not their fault that they're in the situation that you know there are cases that it's um, not actually the person's fault <laughs> yeah I, I just the circumstance I just dealt with a, a similar case myself. Um, it was a, a elder gentleman, and his house was in an immediate state of failure. Um, and it was to the point where it, it was going to cost him his life very soon. Um, he did not want to leave his place, and unfortunately, it, it became my choice, and I, I, right. I condemned his house. And, and it's not a good feeling, but the walls were... were um, he was the only part of his house that was still habitable was the second story. Everything else had collapsed mm. underneath of it, and it was starting to lean. I mean, it, it, it was it was going to cost him his life. Um, he is now living with his daughter in another state, which is amazing that he did have a place to go, um, even though that wasn't his first his first choice. He wanted to, to stay in his home, but um, yeah, sometimes you know those those hard decisions need to be made for the better good. I, I hate to make it makes you feel like a bad guy but um it, better it's, than the death it, it's yeah my save, question save was more life. to help you um is there a way that we can work together to try and find some other resources um, um, when we first go to a property that you're going to probably condemn um say look i need some contact information for family members or whatever that you know we have someone that we could contact and say do you know the conditions I had it happen with my sister, believe it or not, a year ago. A sheriff's department called me. Yeah. She'd been rushed to a hospital, and a deputy called me, and he says, Commissioner, you need to know the conditions your sister's living in. If, if we could find an avenue to help these individuals, I would 
be forever grateful because that that is a it's a huge concern especially now with the housing shortage that we have i mean it's not it's not about finding a place it's that right now there's not a place um to be had um all right so yeah if we could if we could solve that that would be that would be great okay i just would like to work you know that, that's what i'm saying is there if there could be a red flag or something that says um, hey somebody you know this person is going to be condemned we need to take the next step to try and help them or whatever you know what i mean Sure. And, so anyway, and just we, kind of we agencies working together. We can definitely figure out the information when we need to click uh, on here when the time of who on. you know who the property owner is, and um, we oh. can work with okay. uh, possibly the sheriff's department uh -huh. to figure out who the next <coughs> next kin would be and, on the and Another one? see if we can you arrange that help. Yeah, so yeah. that's definitely something we can put together. Okay. Click on that. I really didn't see anything else in here that I had questions on right away. But to be honest with you, I didn't read the whole thing. I just kind of scanned it more than really read it. So, um, I, I haven't seen anything else that was a concern for me. Yeah. Um, Not me neither. So, so just to open up that conversation. So, in the the fee section, one of the changes that uh, I, I made due to the uh, a page, bud. So it's on the second page. Okay. It is two point oh eight point oh five zero, and I added. Uh, I, would like to add the line. Um, the fees collected by the building department shall be used for the administration and enforcement of a, a building inspection program under 455.210.3G uh, uh, of the ORS. And, and that's a state law saying that basically building department fees have to be used in the building department. They can't be used to subsidize other uh, parts of the government. Um, that's intentional to keep building permit costs low. I like that. Um, two sections down under deputies, uh, I just put in accordance with uh, prescribed procedures before you know the rest of that started um, just to, to make sure that it's verbalize that we're, we're not stepping outside of the, the your bounds. Um, I'm not just going to go, you know, deputizing any any person to, to assist me without bringing it to you first. So, um, so I'd caught those. And I think I had one at the end. Um, yeah, it was just the changing the 90 days to to two years for retention of plans was the only other you know, the other catch I had. Everything else remained the same as what you have. So, um, good. You know, so, we can't, we don't vote on anything in a workshop. We so. don't vote on anything in a workshop. So, uh, back 19th and yeah, consent if, agenda. If I can, I would like to bring it before you for a vote. Sure. If we're going to be changing the county code, it actually has to be done by an ordinance. Okay. So there would be two hearings, and uh, we'd have to publish and stuff. But I can work with uh, with yeah. Garrett to set that up, and we sure. can try to get the first hearing for the 19th to start the process. Sounds good. Yeah, sounds sounds great. Meeting on this. Yeah. So. Very good. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Thanks, Garrett. Mr. Chair, I just cha we still have uh, Director Lang here, so I just changed uh, ORW Architecture to three o'clock. Okay. So we won't be holding up Director Lang any. Director more. Lang, come on in, Director Excuse Lang. Me. Do you work for you, Hall, too? <laughs> yeah. I think I've got like 10,000 steps in today. I'll bet. <laughs> the I'll good bet news you. is we're moving. I'll bet you do. And this will probably be pretty short. This was um, to follow up on discussion about Colvin Building updating IT. Um, so when I left here, I spoke with Dave, and he sent me a whole bunch of information on the ARP funds, did some homework there. Then I talked to Brad several times about, oh, well, not several times, a couple times, about ARP funds there. Um, we believe that with um, the additions and partnerships that we're going to have at the Colvin Building, that it does apply and that we would like to submit an application in. And um, it would be under uh, the services to um, impacted communities. We think we have youth who've been directly <coughs> impacted by COVID education, GED, um, social services. I think there's about five uh, expenditure categories that that falls under. So perhaps the discussion would be um, 
we would like to turn in the application, see if it's approved. If it's approved, we have an answer. If it's not approved, then maybe we get creative and look at other sources to be able to do that. But um, I did try to get Dan to be here today to answer general questions, but I'm gonna guess with what's going on with Goose Curry and all the power outages, he was not able to be yeah. here today. Um, the quote's pretty, it's pretty basic. That's what they need to update. I, I'm sure all in favor, I'm in favor so. of paying with, paying for that through with the ARP funds if, if it can qualify, so. I figure that would save everybody's budget. Yeah. Money's all coming from the same pot, so. I don't know if there's questions or anything like that, but it sounds like that might be step one, is we will submit that and then go from I, there. I haven't seen the, uh, the request, so what is the request amount? Uh, 14, I think it was put in last time's budget, 14,381, I believe. The original, when I came before Bach, I submitted it 14 32896 and this is for just so I'm clear a new phone system no no it's to update the entire IT over at the Colvin building originally when they updated it was part of it because it wasn't being used they didn't do it so it, everything it's running at about one-tenth the speed that it should be Dan has some concerns that we may be looking at a crash are you going to have your own server over there, or are we still going to use the main server? It's a it's a separate, I, and I have to apologize, I don't understand it all, but it's a separate server that's in there right now. It's us in maintenance, um, and they want to not only upgrade it, but put more ports so we can expand and bring partners in. Okay. Uh, and we did already buy, it needed a battery backup. We've already purchased that, and then once we get over, there would be Wi-Fi for our resource room, but we have already got a grant to pay for all Wi-Fi once we get okay. there. So. Are we in agreement, gentlemen, that if this can come out of ARP? Any and and your initial thought was it would it would be it would qualify. Oh. Sorry, bud, you gotta um, my my initial thought was that it'd be infrastructure would go under infrastructure would which wouldn't qualify. Oh, but okay. after talking to Wendy, she proposed she she had a different thought on it of um, using a, using um, because there are provisions in AARP, ARP that that speak to um, providing services to um, <coughs> what's the term the the, the disproportionate um, er, areas of the population okay. and and that that would uh, yep. that Definitely. would qualify okay all right well I think you got a head nod so. We, we can't vote on anything, Wendy, you know that, but you... Yeah, we'll, do that. we'll do all the paperwork and get it submitted. So the 19th and, yeah, we can, we can vote that through. Thank all you. right. Thank you, Wendy. Okay. Um, Colvin Building update, Garrett, Curry County Workshop. We did that. Or so no, I told uh, ORW we could do three. I can get them back on here probably. Yeah, next five minutes. Giddy up. We could take a little break. Five minute break. Good to me. Any, did code anyone else did, have anything? Melvin did. Oh. All right, five minute break. Five I guess. minute break. Actually, we're back just 10 We're back on. Pardon me? We're on, yes, okay. So we're just waiting, ladies and gentlemen, for uh, the new jail courthouse ORW architectural plans update. Russ, rough estimate on total cost. Make sure you're sitting down. Courthouse phase one, 22 minutes. Phase two, another, that's the jail. Another 20 minutes. <laughs> Easy. So 42 million? I don't see the total. Put the mic. What? What? Okay. All right. Thanks, James. Fifty million, you said. Oh. Wow. Jails are really expensive, especially a new jail. Yeah, state of the art. 
They've even got floor sensors in them now. They know right where you're standing. <laughs> the federal jails do. They know right where you're standing in your cell. Wow. Too much information. Well, they couldn't have cameras in the cells mm. because the re you know, nudity and all that stuff. So they did pre pressure sensors in the floor to make sure you're there. Make sure only one person's in there, those kind of things. They know how much weight's in there. Do we have to have that? No, we don't have to. I'm just saying they do. I, I just. Say my source. <laughs> okay, it says she needs to be let in. She's on, but needs to be let in from the meeting. Sure. <laughs> they would probably know that though, wouldn't they? Did you hear that? What? Court got an email that says that she's on, just needs to be let in on the meeting room. So, do we know? Does anybody know how to do that? Up in this, uh, the snowflake thing up there? Uh, no, not that one. I don't know. She's in the waiting room, Jerry. About, oh, see where the see it says one person up there, the two little people right there, yeah. What nope, that? that's only us. Okay. She doesn't have the right re meeting room, or maybe we don't. Does she have the right ID? Do you see that meeting ID? When, yeah, when make they... sure she's on the right meeting. There's the meeting ID. Give her that ID. See it right there above you? Meeting is unlocked. Lock the meeting. Oh, let me send her another one. Go down and unlock the meeting, Commissioner. Right there? Yeah. Probably over on the button. There you go. It's unlocked now. Yeah. If you have her email address, can, do you put an email address in on these or? Uh, hit that invite button. Yeah, hit the invite button, Commissioner. Should we send her another one? Maybe she's on an old one or something. Commissioner, would yeah. you hit the invite button right above that? And then you can share that link with her to an email. You can email that link to her. Just email that link. No, I don't know if we can email from here, though, can we? Well, that's the meeting code. You could just send her the meeting code, Commissioner Boyce. It's 193-939-397. One nine three. Yeah, one nine three nine three nine three nine seven. Does it have to have those hyphens? No, it doesn't okay. automatically type in. Let's try that. Huh? Hmm. I think we had this problem with them the last time they tried to come on. Yeah, it was a little bit of a hi. Okay, we've got to go back. The, the one that she was sent was 987-800-845, so maybe it is, maybe there was two on there or something. Can I see the mouse? Yeah. 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 Two or three different ways, yeah. We can close this one. And the meeting, yes. And then we go to, go to meeting. Come on. And then open this up. What was it, Commissioner? It was Veterans Health Authority, Marina. None of those. No. Nope. Are you looking um, at my meeting? Oh. Uh, nope, not in it. Uh, we don't have that ID. Type in. Type it in here. You want to type, type in 987 dash oh. <laughs> oh, sorry. 800 dash 845. Connie Hunter. Oh, that's Connie Hunter recognition. There it there is. It is. All right.
I'm going to unmute us. We are unmuted. Hey, look at there. Can you hear us? You're on. You're on with us now, and we also have David Wilkerson on. <laughs> did, you say, did you say you almost let David on? No, I say he is on. We can see him. We can't see you, but we can see Dave. He's in a nicely flowered shirt. <laughs> we can give you the number if that helps. Well, she's already on here. I think. Yeah. But she's on the phone. Oh. Okay. We just uh, we, we gave you the address. Okay, Commissioner Boyce is going to send you a link. Maybe David could help you out. He figure with a shirt like that, he should be able to figure it out. Yeah, if we get David to, to forward it to you, Dana, then uh, we know we're going to get you on the right meeting here. It, it, our apologies. There you go. Yeah. So uh, it's the same link as before, Dana. The link didn't change. So, yeah, I think if you scroll down in that email you just got, uh, toward the bottom is a link. Dana, that's my fault, I, I think. Oh, no worries. No worries at all. There it is. Coming up. Well, it still says she's just on the phone, though, I think. Yeah, Jeff was having the same issue. So he's there she is. All right, you can close your phone call now, Dana, and that way there we won't get an echo. There you go. We got you. Jeff should be here any moment. Tell Jeff he's always late. Chris <laughs> said that, and you can tell him that. <laughs> <laughs> We can't hear you, Dana. You need to unmute, Dana. That's the problem she had last time we couldn't hear. Her. Right. There's Jeff. Yes, this is why we we moved from go to meeting to Teams because uh, go to meeting seems to is wacky. <laughs> we got Microsoft Teams as well. We've, we've got that as well, that software as well in the computer, Microsoft Teams. So maybe the next time we do this, we can use that. Dana, are you on? Yeah. Yay. There you are. <laughs> Dana, I can relate to you. You and I are, are brother and sister when it comes to this IT stuff, so. I, I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing with you. <clears throat> Thank you so much. I appreciate the solidarity very much. Um, so, are you? If I share my screen, are you able to see my screen? Yes, I can. If I get the mouse for a second, we'll try. <laughs> I think I could figure this one out. We go back to uh, right here. I think. Yes, yeah, make presenter. There it is. And there we go. You are now a presenter. Excellent. Thank you. And we can see your screen. We have it. Hey, Jeff, how are you? Thank you. I'm doing well, thanks. Good to be here today. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Um, are there any questions before we dive in? No. No, we're all sitting down, though. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Yep, yep. This is definitely it's a, it's a big number. So, the cost model, um, uh, the first page is a lot of fine print. We'll cover that as we're actually going through the numbers.
person, I think it may be easier for all of us to uh, hang together and understand it uh, if I just kind of dive into the numbers and we can come back to detail at any time. So these are the costs. Hmm. Uh, can you can you see a, a spreadsheet? Yes. yes. Okay. So I'm going to go straight down here, right? This is the biggest number that there is, 106 million. And I will walk you all through how the numbers are built and answer any questions that you may have. Okay? Okay. Uh, this is a normal part of the process that we... Uh, go through a very kind of methodical approach of meeting with your departments, understanding what your buildings need to be, uh, creating a concept design and how big it is and its flow and things like that. And so we shared that at the last meeting in December. And at the end, after we have provided enough definition about how big the project is and mm -hmm what some of its materials and systems are, then we do the cost model at the end because it needs that development before we can really put numbers to it. Um, you can see on the left-hand column here, there are three major categories. There's site costs, there's building costs, and there's what we call special considerations for this project. And the way that the numbers are built is that there is a unit cost, typically it's a cost per square foot, and then there is the area that that pertains to. Sometimes it's uh, an allowance, um, but usually what we've done is we've created, um, we've taken off the square footages from the actual concept design, and that creates a construction cost that this is this is the number that you would pay the overall, um, let's say, the subcontractors. In the state of Oregon, there's something called green energy technology, and that is 1.5% uh, of the construction cost that is needs to be invested in green energy, and it is site dependent. But often it gets uh, translated into something like solar panels on the project. It can be on your building or it can be on a different county building, um, but it needs to be part of this project investment. Then there's a project contingency, and if this were a renovation, that project contingency to handle unknowns and surprises but because we are planning to demolish the existing buildings that we're replacing, that project contingency uh, for a project of this size, 10% is a reasonable contingency to add. So that equates to dollars here, so 10% of um, 787 is 787. And then the total construction cost, this is what we call hard costs, or the total check that you would pay to a general contractor. Okay, that is this column here. <coughs> and everything else that you don't pay a general contractor, we call those soft costs. It is permits, it's uh, geotechnical services, surveying, furniture, uh, design and engineering uh, equipment, those kinds of things. And 25%, because you have an economy of scale that you're working with, is reasonable here. Um, that 25% equates to a number, and that the hard cost and the soft cost equals a total cost. So we've created that line item total cost for each, each line item for today's dollars, 
we developed this in November and December, so we kept it at 2021. Um, and then we escalated it, which is the construction uh, industry's term for inflation, uh, for three years. And that three-year timetable would take you from now up until the time of bidding. And we thought it would take some time to um, pull together a funding strategy and also time for that design and permit and bidding process to happen. So that's kind of that three-year piece. It could be done a bit faster, but uh, we felt that was a good time range to put on this. Um, so a few things to consider here is that the Curry County Courthouse and Jail Project and Sheriff's Quarters has most premiums. I mean, it, it has a lot of premium space and factors involved. And so if, if you're doing um, you know, people that are very uh, comfortable and knowledgeable about residential construction, for example, may look at some numbers and say, oh, well, that's really, that's really high or that's really low, um, mostly high because there are a lot of these premium factors. One is it's a public job. So public jobs come with fully and prevailing wage um, expectations or requirements. Um, it, it also um, has public safety. It's got a jail. It's in the courthouse. It's got underground parking. Um, and each of these factors, it, it's got Phasing. It's an essential facility. Um, we'll talk about that more in a moment. And so each of those pieces um, are more expensive than what you would call typical construction. Um, if you, uh, an essential facility is a facility that um, needs to remain operational during and after a major seismic event. And so it is built to a higher structural standard and uh, there's a lot more bracing of, of ductwork and ceilings and things that even that you can't see in space. Uh, and it requires an emergency generator and things like that. So uh, those are some things to keep in mind. Um, the site costs I'm going to um, go down here. Can you see my hand on this site cost? Central? Yes. Yep. Um, and you can see that of the total amount, right, it's a very small, it's a very small number. And most of it really is in demolition and site utilities, including <coughs> interior. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to kind of move down from these line items, though I'm happy to any level of detail that you like on it. And I'm going to jump into the building costs. And we've arranged these from the highest cost spaces to the lower cost spaces. And um, the, the courtrooms and judge chambers and the large commission room had some, uh, they're, they're tall ceiling spaces, they've got some extra equipment, there might be a couple of level changes in them, there's probably some slightly elevated materials and finishes, and so uh, we gave 425 per square foot as a unit cost. Uh, and jail detention areas uh, have, a very, have the same cost, but um, for, for a different reason. So they'll be trimmed with high impact resistant drywall, with stainless <coughs> steel, um, uh, wall base, with you know, just extremely high density uh, and low maintenance kind of materials. The sheriff and the jail office and those support spaces around those two 
I have a question if I can interrupt you. Of course. This is Commissioner Pash. So what what are you showing as the total uh, square footage of this project? It is right here. 167,000 square feet? Yes. Wow. Well, that just doesn't seem right to me. Talking about a three-story building? It's a four-story. Well, with the parking structure, it's four, yeah. Okay. And parking is included in square footage? Underground parking. Sally Port. Right. Can you yes, parking is included. Under the underground parking is included in square footage. Okay. Yeah, okay. Right. That's right right there. About seventeen thousand. And so, Dana, uh, real quick. We we can't see the special considerations until you scroll up. For so, there you go. Uh, can can you see it now? Yeah, we'll go up see. a little higher. There, there we go. Now we're there, now we're good. Thank you. Great. So the last category under special considerations, these are things that the general contractor uh, will likely put on the bid, though it will not be listed as a specific line item. They will kind of figure it out and spread it through all the categories. And um, it is, uh, you know, it, it, it is certainly, I mean, what, what you have that's working in your favor is that it's a, an economy of scale, right? It's a big building. It's got a lot of components to it. Mm. Uh, and there will be a tremendous amount of competition to um, win this project. So, but it, you know, it, it will get people from Portland, it'll get people from um, you know, uh, Eugene, it'll get people from, you know, maybe maybe Washington and California as well. I don't know but because it's in a remote location, uh, it's likely that we, we, should, <coughs> we should be planning for that surcharge. And that um, because of the way that all of the pieces fit together, 
we need to keep a portion of the jail operational while the majority of the building project gets completed. Mm -hmm. Then we need to demolish the last part of the jail and construct the last part of the project. And because there is that phasing um, that we are planning to happen in three phases, um, that there is usually some kind of a, a surcharge for that. And so we didn't put any soft costs on those, but we did um, plan for them. I don't have any questions. So, questions? I have none. Clerk? Uh, you mentioned contractors, that the, the, the competition would be good. Um, how does that work? Do you help us on that? I mean, I know that would be, you know, a phase beyond uh, what we're talking about today, um, the price and funding and bonds, all, all that we would have to contemplate. But you would help us. Uh, how, does, how do you get the word out on something like that to potential uh, contractors? And that's factored in? No. Uh, yes. Oh, oh it is. okay. That's just part of the normal you know, process of being um, you know, a good team player. Okay. We're, one of the things that the architect does during the construction phase is to be your advocate for the project during construction to make sure that you, you get it built the way you want according to the terms and conditions of the contract contractor doesn't take unfair advantage of any situation that comes up with regard to you know facing the project or um, things that are discovered during the renovation that they should have known about or you know delays that that, that you maybe be beyond your control um, which there's you know with a, with a phased renovation where you're also occupying the site there's the potential for all those things to happen which is one of the reasons Don was, uh, Dan was suggesting the CMGC approach is that it, uh, it eliminates that potential um, because the contractor is at the table from the get-go. And it also gives you a little bit more wiggle room if you decide that, oh, you know, we need more time to vacate the annex or we need to, you know, we, we need more time between phases to staff up the jail and get ready to you know, demo the last bit or whatever may make it long. Some, it's impossible to tell which one is less expensive because projects are not are not delivered both ways simultaneously. Um, you know, you choose right. one way, but often estimators will say you pay a little bit more, but it's a much more collaborative approach. 
So uh, what, uh, this is a question I never asked. At what point, you know, assuming everything goes, um, you know, on a fair, fairly routine but methodical path, uh, different phases over a, obviously a long period of time, at what point do you say, okay, we've done our work and th this is as far as we can help you, as far as we can take you on this project? See, we we want you to go. We want you to go to the taxpayers and the state government. You, know? <laughs> you can no. We want you to help us. Excuse me, not go for us. And that's what I heard about your company from the start, uh, yeah. especially from, uh, you know, Jeff and I have, I've always really respected Jeff because we've kind of had that relationship since day one, but uh, I've always heard from day one that you guys, your follow through is complete right till the key, till the keys are handed over. And beyond, so that's good. Beyond doesn't mean you would be an, beyond doesn't mean you would be an inmate, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on how creative we get on the financing of this thing, right? <laughs> well, this goes, yeah, going back to that, uh, you know, a lot of our public sector projects, or most of our public sector projects, have a strong um, uh, out, uh, component of public outreach and engagement. And it's pretty common. You just went blank. We lost you. There Back up go. a couple sentences, please. It's David. pretty common, you said. That's the last we heard. Yep. So it's pretty common for us to have to, um, for us to assist our clients in going to their constituents, either to get approval for a school bond or approval for a utility tax or just get voter support for, uh, you know, maybe a, a, a hotel tax or whatever it is that may be needed to fund that particular project. And it's generally pretty helpful for us to be in those meetings explaining the project because we can explain sort of the nuts and bolts of the project and why it works the way it does, why it's designed the way it is, why it's the size and cost that it is. And that takes some of the pressure off you all. You all can really focus on why our community needs this. And then we're talking about, again, you know, some of us, we can get peppered with questions about, well, you know, these costs are higher than what I did for my, you know, garage or my office building. And, and, and it just takes some of the pressure off you all, and you can then focus on the things that are really specific to your constituents, and you can speak to them sort of the, you know, as, 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 as their representative. Um, and we can be there sort of as that third party, a little bit more, you know, impartial or, you know, kind of an expert who's done these over and over again, and, and take some of that heat off. Well, very, very helpful. Hey, on the information packet uh, before the meeting, uh, I sent out a article on Benton County. Are you familiar with that, where the state paid for half of just the courthouse, but it was $40 million. So in that sense, the sticker shock we have from this, it doesn't seem that, you know, that far out of line. Benton County is, uh, you know, population-wise, about twice the size of, of uh, Curry County, maybe three. Um, but they got... You know they really got some great state assistance there, and, and uh, we're we're in we're in a good position. We re, we remain in a good position. So, um, did you see that article, or were you familiar with that by chance? Yeah, we were just, uh, matter of fact, the jail commander was just over today giving us an update, and there was a group of counties that came down and kind of surveyed our jail, and <laughs> what they say it was the worst of all of them? They've seen it's the worst. Conditions-wise um, and upkeep and cleanliness, it's the, it was fine.
but the structure itself is the worst. So we appreciate you saying that, though, because we know we're going to have to demonstrate the need and make the case that, uh, you know, we want to be moved to, you know, maybe not the head of the line, but we want to, we want to have a realistic approach based on what we're dealing with here and what the dangers are, what the needs are, what the long-term uh, expectations are. So, yeah, thanks for reading that, by the way, Dana. So did I hear you say or at least somewhat commit to a project manager here the whole time of, during construction? You know, generally... That was somewhat of a leading question, by the way. <laughs> Having never, I want to go, back to that. go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, I just wanted to go back to, to the question about having a, a, a project manager. Um, during construction, we'll be on site, you know, typically weekly, for a project of this size, um, just to monitor the work of the, of the contractor and make sure everything's going, going according to plan. Um, some of our clients uh, decide to hire their own project management consultant, or what we call an owner's rep. Um, to help them out, particularly you know, smaller agencies that don't have a, a huge facility staff that they can devote somebody to this. Um, and, and, you know, some of our clients find that it, it's helpful to kind of take that burden off and to be able to have a, a resource there who's, okay, for the life of this project through design and construction, 
you're you're the go-to person. You're going to report to the commissioners once a week. Uh, you're going to you're going to attend every meeting. You're going to vet contractors. You, you know, you're you're going to arrange meetings with all the stakeholders. I mean, a lot of the same things that we have been doing with with you all to now, you could you could delegate that to a person. That that could be a, a county employee or it could be a consultant. Um, it's you know it really kind of depends on the the time that you all have available to devote to this. And you know I mean you know one of you may have time to, to do that um, and, and so that, but that that's a question that um, I think is really well, it, 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 I mean there, there's no wrong answer in terms of how you all do it I think that a lot of our clients find that when they do hire an owner's rep um, a lot of the things that that owner's rep says or that they offer to do is stuff that is already in our scope of work things that we're you know, either legally obligated to do for you or contractually obligated to do for you in terms of holding the contractor's feet to the fire, reviewing applications for payment, things like that. So we're, you know, there's, during the construction phase, there's a little bit of redundancy between what those people do and what we already have to do. Um, but for some of our clients, it is helpful to have a, a, a point person that they can go to um, you know, if you decide to go that route, we know some folks in Southern Oregon. I know somebody in Curry County who, you know, who, who might be available to help you out and just kind of uh, lighten your load a little bit. At the same time, and, and I think it's worth going into, I think it's worth more conversation, that particular piece, um, because we do find that there's a fair amount of duplication with, as licensed architects in the state of Oregon, which is one of the strictest most rigorous kind of training and, and education states for architects. Uh, we have the health, safety, and welfare uh, always at the top of our uh, responsibility. And we, have, we also have a fiduciary duty to make sure that you uh, pay only for what is required. And we already have to review those things. So, um, yeah, it's a great have, question worth discussing more. We also have the, the code of ethics of our professional organization, the American Institute of Architects, which is similar to the Bar Association for Lawyers. So, you know, above and beyond what we're uh, legally obligated to do, we're also ethically obligated to, to, to do certain things and, and, and conduct ourselves in certain ways. So um, it, is, it is worthy of a separate discussion because sometimes that owner's rep fee can, can get to be you know, a, a, as much as half of our fee. Um, and, and, and so the, you know, that adds to those soft costs that you're paying and, and you've got to find money somewhere to pay for that. Um, we had one client, uh, the Jackson County Health Department, when we did a new 170,000 square foot building for them, um, they actually uh, uh, basically hired within the county and, and, and found a person within the county, uh, someone who was already there, they, they, they replaced that person's job and devoted one of the, the county staff to be their project manager. She followed the project all the way through from, from pre-design through construction. And you know, in the meantime, they found someone else to sort of do her day-to-day -day work and tasked her with, okay, you're, you're gonna focus on this project. And, and that was a, a really very effective solution for them. It cost a lot less than hiring an owner's rep. And then when the project was over, she was able to take that information and knowledge and kind of you know, give it back to the county and, and her work in other ways and other projects that she then took on. It was, it was an unusual approach that we hadn't seen before, but it worked out really well. So if I could ask, um, you know, knowing that the uh, the court, or not the court, the, uh, the state has already given us um, basically a go ahead for, uh, I think it was three, three million or three and a half million dollars uh, is what we received. Um, the go ahead on what would you recommend to be our next steps? Boy, um, that's a great question. <laughs> and worth probably a small internal discussion on our end. Um, you know, I think that is really smart to spend good money after good. Yeah. And if you felt like this uh, project needs to happen, and 
it's going to require risk in order to do that. You know, what is that risk worth? Is it worth spending a million dollars or two million dollars and doing some more design to um, and, and doing some public involvement, public education? Um, often that is what's needed. You know, you, you have to, you know, kind of shape the community. For for me, I, and, and I'm I'm sure you you know, uh, I testified at, at the uh, with the state of the chief justice um, on this, and I believe they put us number one or number two on the state for nece necessity right now for a courthouse. Um, so I don't think it's it's going to be a hard sell for the state because they already recognize the, the situation we're in. Uh, I think as far as justice goes, uh, like Tom Langford and, and those people through the state courts, um, they're going to help push because they know the situation of the courthouse and the jail. Um, I think it's, if we were going to take an approach, as far as I'm concerned, it, it would be on the need of, ne of necessity need, not want. Uh, this isn't a want thing. This is a necessity. And... Uh, you know, going over, going through the phases that we've already gone through with your company, uh, I don't think we've been extravagant in any, in any face of the, of that word uh, or definition of that word. Um, I think actually we've been quite conservative to try and get it all under one roof, and and have an, a very efficient building. Um, so I, I don't think that the public would see it as extravagant. I, the sell of it would be the need of it, not the want of it. So. That would be my approach, and for you guys to meet on, um, you know, for how you would feel would be our next step would be something that I would welcome, um, at least to have that administrative meeting and then come back and, um, you know, get back together again and meet and discuss our next step and, and how, to, how to best use what we've already been allocated through the Chief Justice. Um, would be my uh, would be my hope. So Dana, David, and Jeff, we have uh, our building official here. I kind of want to introduce him if you haven't met him yet, and he may have questions. Uh, Garrett Thompson, Hello. microphone. Great. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I've been following the the project as much as I can since I've stepped aboard, and um, I, I like what I see. I do. Uh, really look forward to that next phase. Um, I did have some uh, comments and concerns regarding the third story layout. 
um, and, and maybe possibly talking with you about the segregation of uh, a few of the departments that, that have been kind of lumped together, but um, it sounds like there's a, a process for that during the, the uh, schematic phase. Um, so I really look forward to working with you and um, hope, to, hope to stay in contact. One more question, if you could. I've done. Uh, I actually worked on Wall Street for a few years, and and I did. We did bond work uh, there, and uh, compliance had issues with the districts and that that we were doing the bond phase in. Would this bond be something that we would do? Would it be limited to just this community, or could it be a statewide bond? Could it? You know, how how would that work? I mean, how how far could we stretch out on that bond? That's something I don't know, that's why I was asking. <laughs> yeah, it's not, doesn't mean that it's not possible, but I just haven't experienced it. Um, and I'm just wondering if part of it is, uh, is how do you get voters to say yes to something that they don't, can't get access to? Right. Okay. Right. I, I think that's for, for a general obligation bond where the voters are, you know, everybody's paying the same tax rate. Exactly, yeah. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay. Likewise. Thank you, guys. Thanks, for guys, so much. Great presentation. We're, we're definitely going to be in touch now. We're going to move forward. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be in a fast-paced uh, <laughs> program, but we will we will definitely be in touch. And, uh, you know, working with the state, I, I, I think you folks obviously would be a very good resource for us on that. Do we have these numbers also? Do, do we have a copy of these numbers? Yes. Okay. If we could send them a PDF of the... Of That'd the be great, yeah. That, that, thanks. Yes, I think, Court, I think um, you, you have that. Yes, um, mine just didn't have yellow on it. But it was a one-page document, yes. Well, <laughs> this is very nice. Come on. <laughs> so, I 
<laughs> we need green. <laughs> That would be fine. Yeah, that's great. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate it. I just wanted to answer any questions in the meantime. Any thoughts come up, you know, after this meeting or wherever, just feel free to reach out to us. Okay. Okay, and Jeff, next time we're in a meeting together, please don't talk so much. You really interrupted us a yeah. lot there. <laughs> I'm the typical designer. When numbers come up, I kind of go silent a little bit. All right, brother. Take care. Well, now that we know that you guys are like attorneys, we'll have to have an architect joke the next time you come. So. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you all. Thanks. Thank you all. It's been a real pleasure. We look forward to the next step. Likewise. All right, guys. Yeah, it's been a privilege to help you out. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Wow. There it is on the... Uh, Up there? Yes. Okay. Um, Garrett, does that shock you? A little bit. I mean, I was figuring, I said 50, I was thinking, okay, maybe 60, but. Uh, yeah. I, uh, I was thinking, I, I've, I've had a few conversations with, with people about, about this, just uh, uh, kind of guesstimating, and, and I was, we were thinking more along 60 to 75. So, yeah, the, it's, it's higher than I was. But, but I want to say I do not believe there's, and I don't know where they got that, and I'm sure they did their job because they've done a lot of work throughout this state and Northern California and building architecture for buildings. But I do not think there's 167,000 square feet in this building. The, the one they're proposing with the, the vacation of North Street, it's substantially larger than, than what, what's sitting on the ground now. But I thought it was... That's 35,000 square feet per level, including parking. I thought it was like the, 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 uh, the initial drawing I saw of the first level was only like 16 or 17,000 square feet. Um, so I, I've been playing around with, with their drawings and uh, just, just that third story trying to figure out if like, something that would work, work better for us. Um, that way I can present the solution instead of the problem. Um, <laughs> Good. And I, I've gotten a rough scale that works. Okay. I also don't think four hundred twenty five dollars a square foot is what I mean, especially some of the stuff you can concrete it's all out of the I don't know if you can use it here, you'd know more about that than I do, but I've seen buildings down in San Diego that my mentor put up. They were concrete structured and they'd bring the whole wall in in one on in one Built move. Up. They built the whole thing. And dictate it. Prevailing wage. Oh, I absolutely trust this company. I've talked to some people that have worked with them, and they're they're all five stars. By the way, yes, I'll be the first one to say it. I also trusted OpenGov. <laughs> <laughs> good. That's a good one. All right. Well, hindsight is better than 2020. Um, okay. We well, go we got to go back into executive session. So thank you all for joining in and seeing that presentation from ORW. And uh, as soon as we get our jaws back into place and and uh, wrap our heads around that number we'll be back in touch with them so okay. we're going to go back into executive session accordance to uh